Hey everyone, well, we did it. We made it to the end of 2021. Uh, and what's cool is we're kind of kicking off 2022 with a bang. Uh, we're giving away $100 in cash money, everybody, uh, to any new subscriber. I shouldn't say any or every. Pretty much if you are a new subscriber from now through January 27th, uh, you will get an opportunity to win $100 in cash. This is exclusive for new subscribers. You can't unsubscribe and resubscribe. It doesn't work that way. You have to be a new subscriber to be eligible for that $100 cash. In fact, I might be doing something for new subscribers every single month in 2022, but we'll We'll see what happens there. We're also giving away three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus to pretty much everybody. I mean, you do have to be subscribed to the channel, but it doesn't matter when you subscribe. Uh, to enter, go head down to that viral sweep link down in the description or the pinned comment. We're giving away three copies of the game, by the way, which I think comes out January 28th, the day after we end the $100 cash one. So pretty exciting stuff here for the month of January. Now, when I get to the end of every year, uh, at this channel. I like to look back and not look back at the year that was Nintendo. We got a podcast and, and all those conversations that we do there. And we'll probably have, a, have an even more in-depth podcast uh, coming up here next week uh, talking about 2022 as that's our first podcast of the new year. But I like to look back at the channel itself, how it performed from a pure metrics uh, performance. We'll even get into revenue numbers because I'm not someone who sits there and pretends the channel doesn't make real money. Maybe when it gets to a point that I have other paid employees, I probably got to start worrying about privatizing some of that data because then you have other people involved. Right now, it's just me. I'm the only person that needs to worry about it. So I obviously have to con take that into consideration. But what I find really interesting in looking back at this data, and by the way, we'll get into some new ideas as well for 2022 and some goals and things that I want to accomplish. Um, I want to first just kind of look back at the year that was. So if we actually go back to 2020, because that's really uh, where we start to get into some comparisons here. Um, in 2020, we had 3.2 million views, which is nothing to scoff at. That's a lot of views. Uh, we gained 16,500 new subscribers in 2020, and we had around 5,000, actually this is exactly $5,922 in revenue on YouTube. This doesn't count any direct donations that might happen during live streams, but it does count super chats and all that. So yeah, $5,922 in revenue in 2020. Um, let's just say 2021, uh, it's interesting. It's better in some ways, worse than others, depends on which metric you care about most. Uh, we had actually 4.1 million views this year. 4.1, that's almost a million more views than the year before. That to me is insane. Uh, we had 14,600 new subscribers this year. So yeah, about a couple thousand or so less new subscribers than the year prior. Although of note, of that 16,500 new subscribers, 15,000 of them came in one month in September when we were caught up in the algorithm. So if you actually go back to the year before 2020, uh, we only had 2,000 new subscribers that year. And the year before that, we only had 4,000 new subscribers. So setting aside that really one month anomaly in 2020, it was also on pace for only a couple thousand new subscribers. So to me, 14.6K over the course of the year where there's no particular month that just stands out as this is the month we gained all those subscribers means that we had more consistent growth in 2021 so i still view that as a win now what's interesting here is obviously when you get to the revenue numbers uh, i'm not going to hide anything the numbers obviously aren't finalized because we're on the final day of december but at least through uh two days ago uh, we are sitting at just over twenty three thousand dollars in revenue that is what almost 4x the amount of revenue we had last year in fact the channel has never really made more than six thousand dollars in any given year in terms of just ad revenue and super chats and memberships and stuff like that so to sit there and say twenty three thousand dollars in revenue this last year this channel is pretty insane it definitely was unplanned and i had no idea that this was going to happen and I'll Obviously, the increase in views helps, but 900,000 more views equals that much more revenue. More like, you know, we might have something else to talk about here. So let's get into the videos and the views in particular. So back in 2020, we had 350 total standalone videos and 150 live streams. It's kind of funny how that worked out exactly. That gives us 500 total pieces of content produced last year in 2020. Uh, but when you do the division on the total viewership uh, to that, we ended up with about 6,400 views per piece of content in 2020. And again, outside of the month of September, if we eliminate that, we actually only had about 2 million views and only around 
2,000 views per video. So 2020 was really built around a single month. In 2021, we had 377 standalone videos, so a 27 video increase, more than a video per day. Like we were just short of a video per day in 2020, we actually did more than a video per day on average. Um, I know I take weekends off, but some days I produce more than one video. We also had 143 live streams this year, which was seven live streams less than the year before. But I think people can agree we've been a bit more consistent, especially from the summer, moving forward with our live stream content. That gives us 520 total pieces of content, so 20 more uh, pieces of content than we had the year before. But the average view count per piece of content we produced this year was 7,884. That is obviously a nice 1,400 view increase per piece of content over last year. That to me is maybe one of the best metrics here. We could talk about, oh yeah, isn't that revenue great? It is, um, but yeah, that increase in views is really what I like to see. Views per, per piece of content produced matters a lot to me. And I, I can tell you right now, I'll throw out a video and I can't guarantee it's gonna get 8,000 views or close to 8,000 views. But on average for the course of, of every month, it's gonna average out to around that because some videos are gonna perform even better than that. So yeah, that's really, really great. And obviously showing consistent growth here in 2021 in a way that we've never really consistently experienced at this channel. So 2021 overall was obviously a big win just from the metrics perspective. Um, one thing we're gonna get into here are the key moments of 2021 uh, that I find from the channel. So we rebooted the Nintendo Prime pro podcast and built an entirely new set for it. Um, this set's actually changed three times throughout the course of the year. So that to me is obviously really exciting. Um, I like the practical set. I think the podcast sets better than ever. We brought back these mics at some point here. These are really awesome mics we got back in 2018, AT2035s. Uh, very accurate sound, um, high quality, makes our audio version even better. Uh, so yeah, speaking of the podcast, we also moved the podcast to its own uh, channel quite recently um, and it already has 1,680 subscribers I think at the time of recording here uh, and yeah we're getting some decent views over there although we're obviously pushing views a little bit uh, with our giveaways right now so uh, like the Pokemon Legends Arceus you can get bonus entries for even just like checking the channel out so yeah that's really cool and obviously we have some goals for that channel as well because it is directly linked to this one um, beyond all of that we hosted our first massive E3 event some of you guys might know and might not know we did we're live for 12 plus hours, four straight days during E3, uh, and it became the largest live streams we've ever done. During that event, we gave away $3,200 worth of goods to 172 different winners. Um, so that is just wow. Um, and yeah, they became our most viewed live streams of all time consecutively. Each, uh, each of those streams rank as our top four most viewed streams ever, not just due to length, but also due to how many people were watching. They averaged over 700 live viewers per day, every day. That is insane. All right, getting uh, beyond all of that, we did a lot more giveaways than just that E3 event. Um, we gave away three Switch OLEDs this year. We gave away a PlayStation 5 this year. And in total, because I don't want to go over every single thing we've ever given away, especially the copious amount of eShop gift cards during live streams, uh, we have spent $15,000 on giveaways this year give or take, you know, a few hundred dollars. Uh, we also spent $8,000 on new equipment. This includes a new editing computer, um, a new uh, editing laptop that we originally were gonna take to E3, but then obviously we did E3 here. Uh, included the new uh, studio lights, the new camera, cause our main camera broke right before, uh, a new monitor and a few other accessories and microphone lapel mic and, and some bunch of equipment during E3, some cam links and a whole bunch of crap. Uh, we spent a lot of money on that. If you do the math, that means we basically Basically spent the entirety of the revenue of this channel back on the channel either giving back to you or on equipment I can't guarantee that's always gonna be the case we're not always gonna need to buy thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment every single year um, these desks and these mats and everything else uh, but but we do want to keep the giveaways going so we'll see uh, what happens there but yeah obviously um, we just really decided to put all our money back into the channel and back into you guys. And I think that was a very smart investment if you see how 2021 turned out for us. Um, 
Also in 2021, we had our channel hacked for the very first time. You guys might know Shiba Inu or whatever happened at the end of October. Uh, honestly, this is probably what kept us short of even more subscriber goals. We might have even had a couple thousand more subscribers at this point. Maybe we'd even hit 80K because that really wrecked our momentum and it took us a while to bounce back in YouTube's algorithm and we're still not all the way back. Um, we also, because of that hacking, rejoined an MCN. Screenwave Media now represents us. Um, they are a very, very good company. I can get out of the contract pretty much any time I want if I'm not happy. Um, they don't touch Super Chat revenue. They don't touch membership revenue and that's a big one for me because all other MCNs want that part of the revenue. They only care about the revenue we get through ads uh, and that's cool. They also help me get sponsorship deals. They're working on something right now with the company. Um, and it, I, I'm pretty pleased so far with them, but we'll see if I continue to stay with them. But one thing they do help us with is in a hacking situation, they have a separate way to access the account that I don't. So if my email or login ever gets stolen or the login key that's logged in the browser gets taken and I get hacked again, they can actually literally do something about it without necessarily having to contact YouTube. They also have direct contact with YouTube, which will really help speed things along and we won't have to take so many, you know, a week plus to get this all dealt with. That being said, um, that's just looking back at the key moments from 2021. Obviously, you guys have your favorite moments at the channel, the favorite pieces of content. Uh, I was gonna talk about like the most viewed piece of content, the most, but like the most viewed piece of content was like a Zelda 35th rumor video, and I, I, I really, you know. <laughs> is that a low light video or is that a highlight video? I guess it, it highlights the year that was a lot of rumors. Uh, so there is that, I suppose. Uh, in 2022 though, I have some goals. First up is a health goal. And this is just a goal that I, I put up every year. And so far I've completed this two years in a row. And that is that I wanna weigh less at the end of 2022, or I should say on January 1st of 2023, than I do on January 1st of 2022. And I can safely say I've already achieved that over last year, and hopefully we'll be achieving that over this year. I'm not gonna give you guys my exact weight, but at the rate I'm going, I'm hoping by summer, you guys can notice a slimmer looking Nintendo Prime, even though I'm probably still gonna be a bit of a pudgy boy. Uh, beyond all of that, um, I do wanna get our Nintendo Prime podcast channel to 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please go check it out. There'll be a link down in the description uh, to that. I I really want to get that up to 10,000 subscribers. I, I really want to get that podcast kind of flourishing on its own and not always so reliant on uh, what we do here because the podcast is a very different kind of show. We always have special guests. Uh, I think it's it, it's just an exciting thing we do every week. Um, but I want to make, I, I kind of want that podcast to be its own thing. It does have its own separate support system as, as well at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime that I barely ever talk about, but that's literally for the podcast. Um, so if you guys want to go support the podcast directly, that's the best way to do that. Um, I also want to reach for the stars a bit with this channel. I want to see if we can hit 100,000 subscribers in 2022. And I know we're entering a period where a lot of people don't care about subscriber counts. They think subscriber counts don't matter. I disagree because in the year that we had the most consistent su subscriber growth, not only did we have the best revenue year we've ever had, we also had the most consistent growth in average viewership, clearly showing there is a correlation as long as you're an active channel and not obviously doing anything super controversial that's going to ruin your reputation and make people run away and then you end up with a 500,000 subscriber channel that can only get 500 views per video and that happens a lot. Um, I'm very consistent um, and that was one thing that I had a goal for 2021 was to be more consistent. I was very sporadic in 2020 and I feel like by the end of this year, things have gotten a lot more consistent. You now know videos are coming Monday through Friday. You now know the podcast is every Wednesday unless we have to move it for a special guest or because Eric or I get sick or have a cancellation. Um, you know that we're gonna do you know at least a, a, a gaming live stream every Tuesday. Uh, we're going to have obviously our Q and A streams. Tonight we're doing a live stream for New Year's Eve. We normally do live streams on Friday so it just happens to line up that hey, we get to do a New Year's Eve live stream on a night that we usually stream anyways. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, we will be running that stream all the way to midnight on the dot. Probably ending it, you know, five minutes or so after midnight because I'm going to be tired. Uh, and I got my children. They're going to wake up the next day. But yes, we will make it to midnight central time. I know some people will hit it before us like Eastern, but hey, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go all the way till it's midnight for me and celebrate that just for a brief moment. Uh, who knows, we've got some drinks and have some fun with that. But anyways, that's, that's going on tonight. So 100,000 subscribers. To hit that, we would have to gain more subscribers in a single year than we've ever gained before. It would have to be roughly five to 6,000 more subscribers than we gained this year. Uh, can it be done? I have no idea. You guys really decide that. I just make the content. Um, I do the giveaways and I just kind of hope you guys want to stick around. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, beyond all 
all of that. Um, I also want to improve the quality of our videos. Um, I want to always, I, I, I would say if you go back and watch my content from 2020 and even the beginning of 2021 uh, and you watch my content today, you will know that by the end of 2021, I did achieve my goal of better, higher quality, more consistent content than at the beginning of 2021 and all of 2020. And again, that's my goal every year. By the end of 2022, I want my content to be better, better edited, better put together, better audio presentation, me get better as a host, um, whatever that entails. I am my, like, you guys might think you're huge critics of me. Oh, the rumor videos, oh, the this, oh, the clickbait, the blah. Trust me, I'm my own biggest critic and I want to get better in a lot of ways. Inconsistent audio, the screaming, the whispering. I understand, I try to level the audio. I want everything to be better by the end of next year. So that is a goal that I have in the back of my mind. All right. Uh, beyond all of that, I do want to get us to uh, 10,000 viewers per video on average. Uh, that's kind of the sweet spot on YouTube uh, where you could start to get some real sponsorships. Like we've had sponsorships this year, but I mean like the, the high quality, high end sponsorships, not that we work with bad companies, but the ones that pay well, because the ones that pay well are the ones that enable us to help reach another goal that I have for at the end of this year. This is a crazy goal, and I don't know if it's going to be achieved. And I'm not dropping out of college. I'm still in college full time. I'm not dropping out of my other work. I'm not quitting my other job right now. But I do have a long haul goal that in 2022 or by the end of 2022, I want to quit my job and do YouTube full time. I don't know if that's realistic. I mean, $23,000 last year sounds like a lot, but it could easily go back to $5,000 next year. There's no guarantee that this growth continues. Um, and I have three children and a house and a dog. I can't just survive on 20,000 a year. That doesn't work. Plus, I don't want to stop doing our giveaways and giving back to the community and improving the channel and buying the equipment we need to buy to progress further. So I'm not quitting my job, but I would like to get to a point where I could seriously consider it and maybe quit it by the end of the year if possible. If not, it's okay. It's not like I'm banking my entire future on this, but it would be nice. And you know, if you guys want to know what a rice, a nice round number here is, I think in the state of Wisconsin, thankfully it's cheaper to live here. I would say if we could make about 50,000 per year, that would be where you start to consider, okay, it's time to maybe do YouTube full time. That's enough to support my family for now. And obviously, you know, I'm still going to complete college and everything. And we'll still worry about, you know, if the YouTube channel grows past that 50,000, but yes, that will be a goal. Not just, and this is total revenue. So this would be sponsorships, the donations, the memberships, the Patreon, everything combined. Um, and then once we get to that point and beyond, we can start to consider hiring others. Um, I don't know if we're going to hire anyone specifically by the end of the year. You guys will determine that. Um, but yeah, that's just something I have in the back of my mind. Um, one thing though, is I want to add some new content. Uh, one piece of new content I want to add is game reviews. That's right. I want to dabble in game reviews and you might go, well, Nate, just do it then. Not that simple. Now you might go, Nate, why isn't it that simple to just do game reviews? They take time. I do find time to play games. Um, but it took me six weeks to beat Metroid Dread. That's not going to work for a game review. Six weeks later, and I didn't really 100% it. I didn't do what I think I would need to do to do a full review. And I don't want to just do your average Joe, you know, eight minute little review that just basically tells you whether or not to buy the game. I will say I plan to do YouTube shorts in addition to those reviews. We have a YouTube short review and then the big review and the YouTube short review is basically quick summary, no spoilers, and lets you know if it's worth your money or not. Um, and then obviously you have the bigger review, which will be a lot more in depth. It'll go into a lot of conversations around different aspects of the game, the likes, the dislikes, why I feel a certain way about certain things, what I enjoy in these kind of games and what I might not enjoy. So this doesn't mean I'm just gonna focus on games that I know I like. I can also do games that I know I don't like, um, like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond that I'm playing right now. Uh, so yeah, I would say I wanna do these, but they're very time consuming and between college and work, and children, um, and obviously this YouTube stuff, there isn't a lot of time to dedicate to getting that done because you have to sit down and actually play the games for long sessions in a short amount of time. Um, so 
this is going to require your guys' help, at least for now. Maybe it won't always require your guys' help. But if we want to expand that content, that's what our Patreon is going to be for as well. If our Patreon can get up to $2,000 per month from you guys, um, yeah, that's where... Yeah, okay, well, we're doing we're doing at least a couple game reviews per month at that point. Um, but again, that's up to you guys. No pressure to actually go over there. Again, this is more of a dream. Hey, if you want to go support us at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime and get us to that 2000 mark, and then I could actually do, you know, game reviews every month, a couple of them. You guys can even, the patrons can even pick what games I'm going to be reviewing. Sweet. Uh, but until then, I just appreciate your support uh, and all the other things that happen with the podcast because of that support. But yeah, that's a that's just something that I have a goal for, and I would lo- love to dive in. But time is money, as they say, and I can't spend more time doing work on this channel without taking time away from my other job, and I can't afford to take time away from my other job without being able to replace the money I make there. So again, that also helps us get towards that goal of being able to do this full time all right um so yeah some other things i want to shoot uh for the stars for here um i want our giveaways to get bigger and better next year i have some ideas behind that that i don't want to share quite yet um i want to obviously grow as a host and as a person and human being hopefully you guys will agree that has happened this year and will continue to happen i think 2021 was the least controversial year at this channel yet um and I hope that that just continues to be the case moving forward. I, I, I feel like we've been rather drama-free here in 2021, and I want that to continue. There could be disagreements with the content I make, how I make it, um, my disagreements I have with fans sometimes, but the difference between that and things that have happened in the past as our longtime viewers will know. Um, I want the general impression to be that at the end of 2022, Nintendo Prime and myself have become a much better channel than at the start, and I do believe, I talked about before, I G that in 2021, and obviously the dream is to become a full-time YouTuber. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it, guys. That's my looking back at 2021, looking forward to 2022, some goals. You'll notice I didn't make a bunch of content promises in there. I've done this before where I'm like, I want to do a prime news thing. I want to do, um, you know, I, I don't know, an arguing with yourself idea. I want to do um, this uh, conversational discussion video article idea. I want to do this. I want to do that. There are a lot of things I want to do at this channel, but most of that stuff isn't realistic to consider until after we're already doing YouTube full time. It's not something to consider to do along the way because again doing youtube full-time means i'm full-time at least 40 hours a week sometimes more depending on what it needs to be done i have ideas for a live news show i've got lots of concepts out there um, that aren't really worth me promising or exploring until we nail everything we're already doing now and do it even better and then get to that point where we're adding in those game reviews as well we add all that into the channel and that's already new content that you can expect on weekends that would be really wonderful because i'd love to drop my reviews on weekends unless we have like a review embargo because we got a review copy of a game which we never get review copies of games so i'm not really too worried about that ah oh, all right i think we're good right did I speak enough? Did I tell you guys enough? Did I give you enough information? Hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know only the most hardcore of my fans will be watching. Um, so thank you guys. And I'll catch you in 2022. Or I guess on tonight's live stream. That'll be the last time to see me in 2021, by the way. We'll be live streaming all the way till 2022 because it's New Year's Eve. Catch you guys in the next video.